That's great. We're at half past, so we'll start off with the next speaker. Uh, I want to particularly thank Sasha here for uh, stepping in at the last minute. We had a speaker who was unable to reach uh, Brussels due to some travel issues. And so uh, on two days' notice, uh, I'm very, very happy that we have this talk. Uh, and I'll let you mostly introduce yourself uh, and the Space Operations Facility at Aachen. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you also uh, very much for, uh, for uh, getting the, uh, the opportunity to having this talk. Uh, actually, we should have this talk two people, but uh, my co-mate uh, decided to drive by car because it was not at Aachen and the car got broke. So I have also now to present his, uh, his faults, but uh, we, we, we will make the best. So um, we are, so uh, I come from uh, FH Aachen uh, uh, University and uh, um, I set up there and uh, with uh, most uh, scholars and, and uh, bachelor students and uh, a ground station uh, that aims to, uh, to, to be like a, a multi-purpose ground station. So most of, uh, most of the operations we perform is hand, with hand-based satellite. My first access was not in the space industry or so. Uh, I'm a, a chemist. Uh, and in a uh, 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 little project with this uh, pocket cube you see there, uh, my best friend, he, who we was uh, an informatic guy, uh, wanted to, to, to develop this satellite. And then uh, he asked me if I could a little bit help with uh, uh, managing all the, the stuff between uh, the uh, launch provider uh, uh, based in Italy and, and our little, 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 little three-man uh, group. And uh, then later, I, I became then uh, responsible for setting up a, a ground station with basically no knowledge at all. <laughs> so it was really uh, uh, try to do something in the best with it. And then uh, we had a somehow, somewhat successful mission, the RAND mission, with this first pocket cube, which was a one unit pocket cube at that time, back in 2013. Um, <clears throat> later on, uh, because uh, for that mission we had no, uh, no funding at all, we had, we had a little bit crowdfunding money, but we, so we had everything got into the development and into the launch, so, but we still needed to test uh, uh, this little satellite. And so uh, we asked many people, and one of those, those people were the uh, University of FH Aachen, and they said, well, okay, since you're the guy, uh, since, since you uh, are also setting up a ground station, we also we have a, a mission, the Compass 2 mission. So uh, we make for you the, the acceptance test, and you will help us uh, to set up the ground station. And then, although at that time, we, without no knowledge, just said, okay, let's do it. And then we did it. <laughs> and uh, now, uh, eight years after that, no. Five years after, um, uh, we have now a, 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 this, this team consisting about uh, 21 students. First, uh, uh, we began with seven students. Uh, m most of them were uh, freshmen, so also they had no knowledge at all. So they had some ambition to learn something about space technology and maybe one day uh, get into space operations, being space operator, something like that. Uh, and uh, then came this Compass 2 mission, uh, but the satellite never, wor never worked, but we trained a lot. And then we decided, okay, now we have the equipment, we have software, most of it uh, uh, open source software. Uh, what now? Well, let's, let's, let's do a, a ground station for, for others that maybe have the same problem and can find their satellite uh, and so on. Okay, so little bit about the uh, equipment of the space operations facility. So uh, since we have practically no funding at all, uh, we make everything uh, um, with a, a lot of uh, creative uh, engagement and uh, by ourselves. So we have, uh, we have a wonderful uh, um, uh, Yagi uh, array. 
It's uh, for, uh, for the 70 centimeter, it's four clockwise polarized 18 uh, uh, crossed Yagi elements. Then we have uh, also for the two meter, we have an array of uh, two of those antennas. Uh, we have uh, helix antennas, uh, quadrifil antennas, Lindenblatt antennas, mostly done, as you can see, uh, by our own efforts. Uh, then, uh, later, we get uh, the opportunity from another, from a an, uh, high-frequency institute to get full access over uh, 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 the intranet to uh, their uh, antenna dish, uh, which was, uh, uh, which is a three meter dish with a log periodic feed. And uh, we operate it with uh, an RTL SDR, that was the first one. And later on, uh, they get us the access to a Roden Schwarz uh, EM100 uh, SDR. Uh, so here you see again some. Uh, stuff going on. Uh, we, uh, since we are located in Aachen, it's a really rainy, uh, rainy city uh, with a lot of wind going there. So we constantly have to uh, make uh, maintenance. Um, and uh, okay, our radio equipment. So of course uh, w we started basically uh, with this one. Uh, I don't know how how much it costs. It's still between 50 euros and 80 euros. And uh, with the old equipment from a uh, uh, mission long time ago. And um, uh, so, uh, for, uh, w which is an ICOM 910, uh, which we use for uh, all the, the satellite communications that are uh, amateur radio based. But we not only perform uh, communication with satellite in uh, the amateur radio band, for example, uh, do we also track uh, weather satellites? And so the ICOM isn't, uh, cannot do this because it's below two meters. And for, for those, we are very, very happy to, to use these uh, RTL uh, dongles. And that now, so it's not true that we get not funded at all. So we got some, uh, so, some money from the Institute, which then regarded, oh, there's something going on here with these students. And so let's, let's, let's fund them a little bit. And so now we have an, uh, uh, this, this week just it arrived, uh, a new ICOM 9700, uh, which can be completely operated uh, over, uh, over LAN. And uh, we are very happy about this because our room is located on the second floor. So we have a very long cable uh, pathways and which uh, are really, um, uh, sucks the, 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 the radio signal. And uh, in one mission, we, we realized that I, I will come later. And so we decided, OK, let's bring everything on top of the roof and then uh, operate uh, everything uh, completely remote. OK, uh, also this teleport is already uh, remoted somehow. Uh, here um, for this uh, EM100, for example, one capability we 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 tried uh, once to 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 make a moon reflection uh, from Belgium to the moon and then to to us at a distance at that time that was uh, in uh, 2018 of about uh, uh, 800,000 kilometers, and you can <coughs> clearly see here this peak here. Uh, what we also do, uh, we we work a lot, and we are very very grateful about this uh, with uh, its operations. So sometimes we shadow track together with them the cluster satellites. Here, for example, you can really see uh, the cluster satellite that's uh, like, a, like, a, like a cylinder with one antenna, and it's is spin stabilized. So here you can really uh, see the rotation, and, and you, could, you, you, you can easily calculate at which uh, rate it rotates. Um, when we are uh, in communication with other teams, for example, the ESA or with uh, other ham radio stations for which we try to get signals from their satellite or also sometimes do uplink, we use uh, Mumble as a communication tool. Um, yes. Uh, so, and that is then, and that, this, is, this is our, our main room. 
And uh, so uh, actually with a really good computer, you could operate all of those software with only one computer. But since we have really old machines, uh, we delocalized uh, every task on different machines. And so that's why uh, we uh, wrote software that transports uh, the, 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 the protocols, in, for example, to talk with uh, the uh, H, uh, uh, um, HDSDR uh, by, the, by the net using the Orbitron propagator. But uh, I, I have some diagrams for this. OK, so um, since we said, OK, uh, we want to be a multi-mission ground station, so uh, we use a, a lot of different software, different tools, um, in order to be able to, 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 to get, uh, make use of all the protocols needed. And uh, uh, we are also beginning to implement uh, CCSDS. That's why we, uh, we work strongly together with ESA. They help us a little bit in, in order to get things done. Uh, uh, we use tool and elements, and now also the CCSDS OEM um, protocol. OK, uh, so in this really short time, uh, we operate this uh, station. Uh, we operated, so when I say operate, that's, that's, that, that's by mean of uplinking to the satellite in order to command the satellite. Uh, we, uh, we have a, a good cooperation with uh, Japan. Uh, now ongoing, uh, uh, here we track either OPSAT, but we are also experimenter on that satellite. It's a satellite that allows you to upload uh, an experiment, and then you can uh, somehow uh, uh, play with that experiment. And uh, um, okay, ESA cluster. This was just a uh, shadow tracking, and this is all done with with students that are in the age between uh, 18 to maybe 23, 22, 23. And uh, yeah, so uh, which, which, which performs their, their bachelor thesis at the end. So here you see uh, when there's a lot of action going on, uh, since we have three teleports, we can really operate all three, um, so all antenna at once. And so uh, you need a lot of people. Uh, you can track uh, a weather satellite and also uh, uh, um, um, get the signal from the uh, Argo, uh, Argos beacon. Uh, at the same time, maybe there is the, the ISS passing and uh, uh, you make some digipeating uh, with that one. So all, di all, all this is possible. Uh, and uh, in order to, to, to get uh, the things a little bit structured, since uh, there are 21 people, uh, and we really want to train them to, to, to think and to, to, be, uh, to act like, uh, as an operator, we have also uh, a certification process with a recycling process so that uh, every of them have to, to perform a minimum of, uh, of passes per quarter in the year. And then they get a certification, and if they do a little bit more, they get an instructor certification so that those guys can then instruct the, the younger generation and so on. Um, that uh, yeah, is, so we try to overcome this problem that you always have uh, 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 in universities as a university teacher. You have a fine group of five people that are really brilliant, and then they uh, uh, are finished with their studies, and then it dies completely. So with that, we try a little bit to, to, to uh, get a continuity in, the, in, this, uh, in, this, in this thing. Um, so um, this is basically not really my fault. So uh, I try to, to read a little bit. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I can understand. So uh, basically, uh, uh, the operation starts always with a predictor. And then uh, uh, through some different protocols, for example, for uh, Orbitron that we use extensively, which has this uh, MyDDE wrapper. Then uh, we go to the different computers for decoding and for uh, uh, antenna control, which routes then to, to, to the actual device, uh, which is uh, for the rotor control, it's basically just a, a motor that points the antenna, or uh, so, a so-called uh, cat box, uh, which uh, 
gives the frequent uh, the, the, the frequency the frequency needed to to, uh, to the to the ICOM uh, receiver or transmitter. Since you you have to follow the the, the frequency because satellites are uh, 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 satellite signals are subjected to to Doppler shift, so you really have to follow this. And uh, and and this basically for all the, the teleports that we have. So we have two teleports with rotors and uh, one teleport uh, just with uh, uh, omnidirectional antenna, quadrifilar antenna. So here you, you don't need the rotor, but you still need to follow the Doppler shift. Uh, so here is a little bit more uh, uh, concrete. So this is the propagator, which calculates uh, the position of the satellite f from your from your point of view, and then uh, uh, it transmits that with this uh, little application. And from there, we uh, uh, design two applications that then uh, transfer those coordinates and the frequencies to the to, to the different rigs, but not directly, because we use uh, Hemlib as a uh, as, as a layer in between. The Hemlib is running on a Linux machine. And that uh, is also something we had to learn very with uh, uh, painful, pain, uh, really painfully, because since we are in a university, in the structure of the university, and they make all the time updates, and you come uh, one day, and then you see, you, you see yourself, your software not working anymore. And so we decided, OK, let's do it in a virtual machine. So at least uh, we, we have a little bit of, uh, of, of room left for changes um, by the IT. So and then. From there, it goes then really to the to to the to the desired hardware. Uh, for the um, uh, demodulation and decoding, um, we use uh, for the moment sev uh, 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 several several modems, uh, mostly written from amateur radio guys. Uh, pack, uh, uh, I'll give you packet engine. Uh, f some older uh, stuff, for example, we use FLDigi. There is a Spanish satellite, uh, FOSA-SAT, which is a really tiny satellite, uh, where we use FLDigi to, uh, let better say, we try to use FLDigi because we, we didn't get a, a decode of that satellite still. Um, and uh, now really new, uh, so uh, GNU Radio is very new to us. Uh, so for us, it's uh, still uh, experimental. Uh, so this will be the, our uh, is is uh, the new implement, implementation that is being installed, but uh, maybe because of a lack of uh, uh, knowledge, uh, we s are still not able to 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 to, to use it uh, uh, fully. Uh, because as, so what we aim uh, is so what we always try is not to just record a signal and then try to decode it afterwards. So we always try to get it decoded as, it, uh, as the pass happens. And uh, it uh, works most of the time. But then I have the problem also that the student, when, when, when he has his pass to perform, then he prefers to use this, the stuff he knows, because he can set that up uh, 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 without really reading the procedure within 10 minutes. And it's really complicating then to, to implement also to younger people to implement uh, new stuff like uh, new radio. So, but we are working hard on it to to get that uh, that done. So here again, so this is then the application that gets from the propagator. Uh, for example, here there's the frequency stuff. Then this is the uh, SDR radio. Then we have uh, an, uh, a, a freeware for the, uh, a virtual cable uh, from where we get the audio part of the signal, and then we route that to to the modem. And that makes then a connection to a terminal where uh, the, 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 the information uh, is then stored as a hex dump. And after then, you can uh, uh, load that information and get uh, data that makes sense to the human. Um, sometimes it's not so complicating. For example, you have also satellites that all have implemented all this. So you maybe don't need the decoder because uh, the, the modem because it has the modem already um, built in. Um, so here is one of our uh, first experiments. 
uh, with the with the with new radio. Here we try to uh, to 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 get uh, to get it run for OPSAT, uh, but what what we really want to do is we want to use this one because we have uh, now a new problem that come came up. Um, since one year ago with RTL dongle, we really could easily uh, uh, receive signals in the 70 centimeter band, but now it's so totally uh, um, um, full of, 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 of stuff in there that uh, often, so here was the <laughs> beacon of, the, of, of OPSAT, but then came this big, uh, so this big disturbing uh, digital signal, I don't know what it is, and then you, you can get any decodes. But when we use the ICAM, uh, the, the, the conventional uh, transceiver, we can, we can get it very well. Uh, for example, uh, using SDR uh, and uh, this, this GNU radio application uh, uses directly the SDR. Um, uh, we, were, we were able to get it for a really good pass because there are good passes and there are not so good passes. A good pass is often a pass with a high elevation. We get five packets and if you use the ICOM without anything, for a very, very, very bad pass, we get at least 35, 33 packets. So, and that is really a problem. So we really hope that we can uh, get the IF of this new <coughs> ICOM, get it work and connect it into the GNU radio so that we can really uh, use the full power of the system. Uh, so that is for the moment, uh, let's say the, the cheap setup that we use for, for that. Uh, as I, I explained it already. Here you see but that was with the ICOM, uh, lots of packets. For uh, an, uh, a pass with an elevation of uh, below 30 degrees. Um, what still really works v well with the cheap uh, uh, RT, uh, SDR radio uh, dongle is a weather satellite on the, on the sub two meter band because that's obviously not in the amateur radio band anymore. It's below of uh, that uh, two meter amateur radio band. So here, even if it's a low elevation, because we have this strong antenna, we really can get uh, uh, um, weather satellite images from one horizon to the other horizon. So it starts at about uh, three degree to four degree elevation right then to the other three to get four degree. So we get really an image from you have uh, uh, parts of Africa, and you have also you can also have parts of the Greenland ice sheets all in one image, which is really awesome. So for the uh, uplinking, it's a little bit the same thing. Uh, for the moment, we uh, we we use uh, um, uh, this easy term, and then we go again via sound modem, and we hope that also here we one day we will be able to 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 fully use GNU radio because we really, well, we really want to, to get rid of all this stuff where you have different modems that you have to use and uh, to, to fully enjoy uh, Daniel Esteves' uh, gear satellites uh, because uh, we think that that uh, would uh, make our life a lot more e easier at the end. Maybe with a lot of forework, but then once the system would then run, uh, I think it would get uh, a lot more a lot more easy. So this, for example, uh, was uh, using the ICOM uh, was an SSTV image that we um, I think this one was not yesterday but on Friday. Uh, so we we get really high quality images uh, with our antenna setup, and that is done with the SDR. So you really see that's the same pass. Uh, almost the uh, same elevation, and you really see a big difference. Uh, what we also uh, really like to do is uh, we follow uh, the, the, the Soyuz, uh, and we are very lucky because uh, Soyuz only communicates in that region, and for the rest, they don't talk at all. So as soon as they, they, they can physically have a connection with Tsup uh, in Moscow, uh, they start talking, 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 talking all the time. It's very, uh, very interesting, all in Russian, but it's really amazing for, for, for young students to, to hear the commander in Russian speak to uh, Mission Control uh, Moscow. 
Okay, uh, uh, here, that was where the first time where we, we really got aware about the problem that we are sitting in the second floor and uh, our antennas are on the fifth floor. Uh, so we, we tried hard, hard, hard to, 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 to get any, any of those uh, tiny beacons. Uh, when we, we, we got it one or two beacons after weeks of work. And then we uh, discovered web SDR, a very wonderful uh, uh, um, uh, tool. So that's a receiver. You just log on via the internet. Then you connect your modem and uh, you, you finally can can uh, understand the signals coming from that tiny satellite that orbited around the moon. Um, and then, because we really tried to, to, to get it also by our own, I discovered also this nice sheet from uh, Daniel Esteves, and I got the idea, oh my god, maybe if we really point, it, it said that uh, it does not make the difference, but maybe small difference could, uh, could, could change the game. So then I, uh, I, I took the, the book of David Vallado with the students uh, uh, we implemented inside of GMAT, then a function that uh, uh, calculates, because GMAT can, cannot do that, that's an, an, uh, an orbital simulation, but we needed to get the estimate and elevation to point the antenna, and so we, uh, we, we used uh, this algorithm in, uh, from that book, and then we wrote a program so, so then the, uh, um, GMAT then writes down a file with all the positions. So we, we took the state vectors then from the, uh, from the Chinese guy, uh, from, the, uh, for, from the University of Harbin, or, or was, it, was it your, uh, you also had it on, 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 on your GitHub, no? And then uh, we, uh, so this program just read it, uh, read it that, okay, time is up. <laughs> 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 Sorry.